Hey everyone, today we're going to explore the Metafor.Systems, which is a search engine built specifically for LLMs. Uh, it's API retrieves the best content on the internet using embedding-based search, and it, uh, you can use a thousand requests from their API for free per month. It's really great. You can just type in anything here. You can set a site filter or a time filter, and here is the Python code, which you can use to uh, actually retrieve relevant search results, which you can use with your uh, GPT call, for example. The most beautiful part about Metaphor is that it not only searches, but returns you the clean, up-to-date HTML content from the search results, so no web crawling or scraping required. This is the part I like the most. So we can run a quick API call after we have assigned our API key to Metaphor, initiated it. We're going to search for hottest AI agent startups. We're going to set use auto prompt to true. We'll talk more about that later. And when we run it, as you can see, this is our results. First one is agent ops, uh, high operator, and uh, it includes the URL, ID, uh, score, publish date. We can also, this object has a results uh, attribute. We can actually only print the first one if we want it. Let's go ahead and do that. And when we run it like this, we should only get the first response, which was the agent ops. Pretty cool. We can also use the get contents method of the responses that is returned by the search to get the extracts. As you can see, you don't need to scrape it anymore. All the information you need is uh, right here for that particular URL, and you can access that. You can also get the contents by using the getContents method, and that's assign it to contents.items, and that's going to have a contents attribute. And we're going to look at the second item's contents, for example. And when we run this, we should see the contents of the high operator printed right here. Actually, there is always tech meme, and this is its extract. You can also access it by extract like this. And then we just print the extract. This is what we get, the entire uh, scraped HTML. We can also loop over the results and print the URLs. You can also set max number of results. For example, let's set it this to three. And we're going to loop over the result.url for each result and responses.result and print the URL. And when we run this, we get the URLs. It doesn't sometimes return the exact number of results. For example, if we set it to five, let's see what happens. Uh, but that's a little bit of caveat, but there, there it is. We have the five results of the URLs of the five results right here for the number of results we've set. So to, to overview, we can make a search by calling metaphor.search. We can set the number of results we like. We can print the entire responses. We can print the first response and we can print the first response's title, for example. This should do that. Here we go. You can also get the URLs from your results with this script just like we've talked about. And now you can actually get the contents. And here I'm printing the extract of the first content. There we go. And it can retrieve different results each time. You can find code examples at Metaphor's documentation, which I'll link to in the description. But I'll have some starter files, which you can download for free from my Patreon. Link will be in the description. To uh, get started with Metaphor, Python, you have to install the package. We're going to use OpenAI 2, and we're going to use Beautiful Soup for this next part. Uh, as you can see, Metaphor returns the HTML contents with the extract, but we can use Beautiful Soup to get the text. But when we run this, something like this, and we print the text, uh, we see that it actually comes with extra new lines, and we can actually clean that uh, using dot .join, and then uh, we can print the clean text, which is uh, so much more uh, cleaner. But most times, the regular just direct the printing, the parsed uh, string actually returns decent results. So I'll leave this here, but actually comment it out just in case if you need it. So in our next example, we're going to have a chat loop where we can keep asking questions and also determine the number of results we wish to retrieve. You can ask for NVIDIA's revenue in 2023, and I'm going to put five results to summarize. So you can have mixed results depending on how many you're retrieving and which results uh, the metaphor has retrieved. So it wasn't able to answer the first time around. It does say that uh, the search results provided a table, but it wasn't clear. Uh, so let's ask it a different way. Also, I just want to mention that this script will save the question, all the full extracts, and the GPT's response to a JSON file. So I'm going to ask the same question. What was uh, media's revenue in the year 2023? And I'm going to increase the results to 10. This is the max you can do with uh, the free API. And this time it's able to answer from the information provided. Revenue for NVIDIA in their fiscal years 2023 was 26.91 billion. And again, once it answers, the results are written to this JSON file. 
Let's ask for what is the best gaming keyboard. Let's pick five results. So it is answering. It says that there is really no best and it's giving factors that you should consider when choosing the keyboard. And now it's actually making some suggestions. So this is pretty cool. And when it's done, uh, of course, we append to the JSON file. As you can see, our question was, what is the best gaming keyboard? And it had a search result from CNET, for example. And this was the GPT's response. So let's take a look at the code and how we were able to manage this with Metaphor. Of course, we imported uh, Metaphor, beautiful soup. You don't exactly have to parse the extracts. You can actually just send them as it is. But I thought we'll save on some tokens anyway. So we're defining a search and summarize function, which sticks in a question. A number of results, it defaults to five. We define, initialize our metaphor in OpenAI. And then we get the search results by using metaphor.search. We insert the questions, number of results, and use autoprompt true. I'll be talking more about this in future videos because metaphor it actually works in a, a really interesting way. Uh, and it uses a neural search, but it actually has a Google like keyword search as well. And that's for another video. And we get the contents, right, by getting the get contents from the responses. And then we get the extracts. We initialize the extracts list. We loop over the contents that contents. We get the text and we clean the text and then we append it to our list. Then we initialize our messages to GPT. It's just saying, so you're a helpful assistant, putting the user question as a message, as the role user. And then we join the extracts into a string and then we append it. Here uh, we can actually append it as the user, as the full extract. Now we make a call to GPT-4 with streaming so we can print the responses as they're being generated. After we get the GPT's response, then we create a data JSON uh, object. With the question, full extract, and GPT response, we create the file if it doesn't exist and we append to the file. So you can actually safely delete this file if you like. It'll recreate it. And then we enter our, we return the GPT responses and we take in a user question under a while through loop. We get the number of results, we print summarizing, and then we initiate the search and summarize function with question number of results, and then we print done when done and take in the next question. All these files will be available for free at my Patreon. But while you're there, uh, feel free to browse around. I have over 200 posts, which I created in the year 2023 and continuing in 24. I spend over 2000 hours creating these projects so that you can find it easier to get started with GPT. There are a lot of cool projects such as GPT Live Assist, which actually works directly from Visual Studio Code. I built a GPT Plus Perplex Perplexity Web Research Agent. These are just some of the examples. You can actually download these, get started, actually modify them for your own uses, get inspiration, give them as few shot examples to uh, GPT to create interesting code files and projects. I also have a unified chat to be able to use Gemini, Mixtral. GPT-4 and Perplexity. I call it the unified chat. You can, if you enjoy my projects, you can search and find the projects, type of projects you're looking for at my website, echohive.live. And if you're a patron, you can just click on these code download links, for example, for GPT and Perplexity Web Research Agent, and it'll take you the code download file. You can download it right here and get started right away. Also, if you're interested in creating educational content, or if you want to get into content creation, check out the app I built, Auto Streamer and Web Course Maker. I have a live stream which demonstrates its capabilities right here. As well, you can visit it at autostreamer.live. You can it actually creates and course websites in real time. History of Python two versus Python three. Well, in real time, you can record this or live stream it to your audience. And at the end, it actually creates a website, which you can deploy, which I have done at railway.app. I actually demonstrate how I did this in this live stream, at the end of this live stream. So feel free to check it out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.